it looks like any other childhood. Days in the park, your head in the sun, reading stories and fairy tales in a world you've made all your own. No worries, no stress, except that is not especially true for this young child. I could die or bleed to death. So now you know better not to do that, right? I want you to. Her name is Josie Romero, and for as long as she can remember, Josie's been trying to break free from a nightmare that few children will ever know. Do you want a hug? I'm sorry. To help Josie, her mother Vanessa is prepared to go to lengths most parents could not imagine. I was in such a desperate state to get my child okay. Their story begins in 2001 when Vanessa gave birth to a son, Joey. He was the center of a loving blended family with stepfather Joseph, an Air Force engineer, and later an adopted baby sister, Jade. But the family scrapbook doesn't show the problems Joey was having by age three. Temper tantrums, awful. Glass shattering, piercing, yelling, crying fits. What did the doctor say was wrong? Joey's depressed. Let's give him Prozac. Prozac. Yeah. Okay, what else? We needed medication to help Joey sleep. Doctors also prescribed medicine for anxiety, ADHD, and Tourette syndrome. There were 14 different medications, 17 doses a day. Okay, that sounds insane. It was. My child was broken, and there was something really wrong. I just wanted it fixed. But there was something else about Joey, something Vanessa never thought was a problem to discuss with doctors. Her son seemed to prefer his little sister's toys and clothes. If we'd go into the store, Joey would already start heading over to the little girl's clothes, mm -hmm. even just for socks, anything. And I'd say, no, we're here for you, not your sister, and start dragging my child over to the boy's socks or t-shirts or whatever. Vanessa didn't see a connection between Joey's obsession with dress-up and his behavioral problems until a routine physical changed everything. They were wrapping up the visit when the doctor noticed the way six-year-old Joey was playing with his toy. Joey lifts his shirt and starts breastfeeding the doll. And the doctor said, I think your child may have gender identity disorder. And I'm like, what, what? Yeah. And the doctor said, you know, like transgender. As you may have figured out by now, Joey is Josie, born a boy, but now living as a girl. When you were little, did you feel like you were trapped in the wrong body? Yeah. How old do you think you were when you started feeling like that? When I started to know? Yeah. Always, I always knew. Back then, the family was living on a military base in Okinawa, Japan, far from any specialist. But Vanessa learned more about the condition from online support groups. It seemed to just click, so she decided to try something radical, buying her child a new girl wardrobe. So we went over to the girl section, Joey led, and I followed. And he just bought the things he wanted. And he started he carrying it. Wouldn't even yeah. put it in the cart, oh, you know, wanted, wanted to hold it. Her son began dressing as a girl at home, but now it wasn't a game. Joey said, okay, you can't say he anymore. You have to start saying she. So we had to correct our pronouns. That took a little bit more effort. And that may be where parents watching this go what's going on over there. Mm -hmm. You know, the kids ruling the roost. That's where it tips over into something um, that they don't understand. That's understandable because I would have too. Even Vanessa's husband was having a hard time accepting the change in his child. We went to this photo studio and Josie's looking through all the dresses and she looked at me and pretty much asked, Daddy, is this okay? Can I do this? And at that point, all of this became a reality for me. No longer did I have a son. And I had to put all my feelings aside to embrace my daughter. What I remember is my dad giving me thumbs up, and I felt like I was going to cry. I was so happy. After that, they say a profound change happened to their child. No more tantrums, no more sleeplessness no more medication needed. And a few months later, they decided to take 
another leap. Send their child to school on the military base in a dress. She's no longer having these fits and no longer screaming and crying. So I thought, the teacher's going to love this. But that was not way That at was all. not the way it went. Parents protested. The family received death threats. Did you think to yourself, you know what? She could have been herself at home and just gone to school no, at, um, that would as Joey. Initially, when we first started, then I was like, yeah, that'll work. But then when I let her out, I wasn't going to shove her back in. But was what was happening that later worse? Me. It was worse for me, but not for her. I felt proud of myself that I turned into a girl. But it doesn't matter what they say. They can do whatever they want. I'm just going to do what I think is right. Because of the controversy, the military moved the Romeros back to the U.S., to Tucson, Arizona. Can you read these keywords? They decided to homeschool Josie, and she began seeing a psychologist who supported the decision to let her live as a girl. The Romeros changed her name legally, Josie Claudine Romero. Hi, my name is Josie. I'm a girl. When I got my girl name, I felt like everything was done, but apparently not. Not done, not by a long shot, because by age nine, Josie was filled with anxiety again, this time over something neither her nor her parents could control, her own growing body. I'm changing my boy style. Josie Romero was born a boy, but has been living as a transgender girl since age six. Whoa. When we first met her in 2010, she was nine and a half. Oh, we're in a desert, hiking around. And she seemed like any happy kid. You can go this way, or you go through here. But in fact, Josie and her parents were now facing a problem they had not fully anticipated. So your mom says that you're looking in the mirror a lot these days. Yeah. Because I'm looking if I have any hair on my neck, or on my face. I'm changing, like, boy style. Josie, who had passed easily as a girl for years, was now terrified of her growing body, afraid puberty would soon turn her into a man. She scrutinizes her image in the mirror every morning when I'm doing her hair. So she looks for facial hair or an Adam's apple. It's a swan's neck. There is no bump there. Nothing else is as important to her as yeah. getting her body to match who she is. What are you thinking? It's getting frustrating. Do you want a hug? Josie felt so much anxiety over her changing body that she once tried something drastic. Did I tell you that I want to get my own surgery? My own self-surgery? She was in the bathroom and she's standing in the shower and she's got her penis in one hand and her nail clippers in another hand. It was like she was building up her determination mm -hmm. to go through with doing it. Mm. Then I ran in, literally, and grabbed the nail clippers from her hand and squeezed her to me. I could die or bleed to death. So now you know better not to do that, right? I want to, though. So what will happen to Josie? Even if her parents would allow it, doctors in the U.S. do not perform sex reassignment surgery before age 18. But some have been experimenting with new hormone therapies for transgender kids, drugs that can start the gradual process of reshaping a child's body from one sex to another. It is a radical treatment for someone Josie's age. I'm just really eager for her to feel at peace. And if she takes estrogen, She'll see her body respond to that, and she'll have that peace. It is a two-step process. First, drugs called blockers that suspend puberty. In Josie's case, blocking the release of testosterone. Then, a more controversial step. She could be given estrogen to make her body develop like an adolescent girl's. They're talking about giving you hormones and, and doing blockers and all that kind of stuff. Is that something that you want to do? Yes. You do? Tell me why. It's going to make me not have big hands and big feet mm -hmm. and get boobs and... You want boobs? <laughs> <laughs> you do? Yeah. That's something most people feel like you ought to wait until really a child is much older. Dr. Margaret Moon is a pediatrician and bioethics professor at Johns Hopkins University. She says drugs that delay puberty, blockers, may be helpful in some extreme cases. But that second step, giving opposite sex hormones, is alarming at Josie's age. 
The changes are irreversible and include rendering the child sterile as an adult. Any change you make that's irreversible is, is harder to justify when the child is young. Even among the doctors who specialize in treating transgender kids, there is debate about when and whether opposite sex hormone therapy is okay. We have lots of very well-informed, very well-intentioned people looking at the same data and coming away with very different ideas. Is this an overdiagnosis issue? Potentially. It's potentially an overdiagnosis issue. But for Vanessa, there was no debate. She felt certain that not only would female hormones help Josie, but forcing her to go through male puberty could be psychologically devastating. Transgender young people are five times more likely than their peers to attempt suicide. Whenever people ask me, how can I just let her do this? I'd rather have a living transgender daughter than a dead son. Yeah, we have to go north to go to Los Angeles. It's time to wake up. Yeah! Having been unsuccessful in finding a local doctor who could help, Vanessa set out with her daughter for Children's Hospital in Los Angeles in September of 2010. Are you nervous? So you're thinking about gender all the time? All the time, night and day. <laughs> Dr. Johanna Olson, whom the Romeros traveled to see, is one of the few medical doctors in the U.S. who treat kids with gender identity problems. Our patients aren't mentally ill. There's an alignment issue between their internal gender and their body. How old are you? Nine. To start. If I were a parent and I see my child and I notice there are some gender issues, you would think that a, it's a phase, or B, maybe they're gay. And they'd be right. Those are very, very common occurrences. What I look for is persistent, consistent, and insistent. These are the profiles of kids that have very, very solid gender identities. Dr. Olson had already consulted with Josie's psychologist. You're so nervous. And after her own examination, she could decide to give Josie hormone blockers. In effect, pushing the pause button on her male puberty. How old were you when you transitioned? Um, about six. Okay. Or she could also prescribe estrogen, the far more extreme option to begin Josie's female development. It seems like puberty, the idea of impending puberty is a little scary to you. I just want to get done. Do you just want it to get done? Yeah. What does that mean? Like, I want to get surgery right now. You can. Let's say you could wake up and have whatever you wanted on your body. You No penis. You want a vagina, breasts, all that <laughs> stuff. I made you giggle. Would that be a yes? Yeah. I hear you. After their one-hour conversation, there was a physical exam. And then, mother and daughter waited for Dr. Olson's decision. It was not what they expected. So a little bit of alleviation of concern of this um, impending puberty coming down the pike right now. Uh-huh. It's not happening right now. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. You don't want your kid to go through puberty at nine. Josie was too young, even for blockers. I don't want her, like, trying to modify her body. No body modification on your own. No body modification without talking to a doctor. <laughs> The worry is we want to go through girl puberty now, even if our body's not ready to go through puberty. <laughs> do you want a hug? I want to go see puberty. You do? Why? Well, so I can be like all the other girls. Can you hold me? I am holding you, honey. Once she really understands that she's not going to walk out the front door with breasts, I think she's going to be really disappointed. Back home in Arizona, Josie clearly was disappointed. Well, I want to be like all the other girls. It's not too long, then yes, I'll be a little longer. So 94.58 is what we want that piece cut down. Nearly a year went by at the Romero household. Josie's dad returned from a tour in Afghanistan. Josie was still waiting impatiently for the estrogen treatment, which is controversial at her age. Guidelines developed in Europe suggest waiting until around age 16. And bioethicist Dr. Moon says the few studies that do exist suggest young kids with gender identity problems often grow out of them. A lot of those kids that start out as children who are saying, I'm in the wrong body, end up finding out by the time they're middle adolescents that they're actually fairly comfortable with their own gender. But Josie is not one of those kids. Or is she? Maybe I'm a boy inside and a girl outside. Really? Right. 
At 10 years old, Josie Romero believed she was born in the wrong body, and her parents have been seeking a controversial hormone therapy that would start chemically changing her boy body into an adolescent girl's. 14 inches. 14 inches, a foot and two inches. Yeah. Estrogen treatment is irreversible and would make Josie sterile. But Josie and her mother never doubted it was the right thing until an unexpected conversation happened one afternoon. But on the inside, where nobody else can see? Yeah. Are you a boy or are you a girl? Maybe I'm a boy inside and a girl outside. Really? Yeah, is that true? Only you know the answer to that. So if you wanted to grow up to be a man, yeah. would you tell me? Mm, yeah. Hey, if you wanted to grow up and be a man, you could. I want to be... Sometimes I think I'm boy, sort of, but I want to be a girl. Yeah. Would you love me if I'm a boy? Of course. I would love you no matter what. I always have, and I always will. It was the first time Vanessa ever heard Josie sound uncertain. I feel like maybe... There's a part of you that's afraid to tell me what you really want. What if I said, oh, please don't be a girl? Well, I guess I'll be a boy. Um, no, honey. I need to listen to you and my mom. Well, yeah, you need to listen to me about, you know, what's healthy to eat, and you need to listen to me about what time to go to bed. But you, you are the one. I have to listen to you. Yeah, well, if you said I need to be a boy, maybe no. I have to. No. For her to have any indecision now, I don't know what it's rooted in, and I really need to find that out. I feel like you're about to cry. I'm just kind of surprised by some of these answers today. It's the first time you've given them to me. Everything I thought I knew is kind of in question. Had Vanessa's wholehearted, unwavering support of Josie's transition actually pushed her child too far, too fast? The thought of her having made such a huge decision in her life all based on what she thought I wanted that would be that would be traumatic for me bioethicist dr. Margaret Moon who opposes opposite sex hormone therapy for kids Josie's age says most nine and ten year olds are not mature enough to participate in life-altering medical decisions they're not sure of who they are and they can't really offer their parent that sort of reassurance even Dr. Olson says there is no exact science that can determine who is truly transgender. What's missing in the data right now is these exact characteristics mean that this person is for sure going to be a trans adolescent and adult. We don't have that data. Now the estrogen thing I find concerning, a decision is being made whether or not Josie will have children, her own biological children in the future. That's why the role of blockers is so important. They get an opportunity for two years, three years to really work with a mental health therapist on what it's going to mean to be transgender. That could still put you at age 12. To me it seems ridiculous to have a, a kid at age 12, 13, 14 deciding whether they want to have biological children when they're 20, 30, or 40. I mean... Well, they make the decision to kill themselves at 12 and 13. That's a pretty powerful decision. We take an oath, first do no harm. If doing nothing is doing harm, you have to do something. You and your mom were talking, she was combing your hair. You said to her, would you still love me if I was a boy? Oh yeah, that. Why did you ask her that? You know, my dad, he, when I started to change, he was a little sad mm -hmm. because he wanted his little boy back. I didn't want the same thing to happen to my mom, like uh, being sad all the time. Josie and her psychologist discussed that moment of wavering, and just a few weeks shy of her 11th birthday, she told us she never really changed her mind. She still really wants to be a girl. Now, what about people, Josie, who watch this and say, you know what, she's going through a phase in her life. Um, I say, no, I'm going to stay like a girl because this is who I truly am. You look really nervous. You're going to be okay. Come on in here. So what do you think? Are you starting? Are you seeing any signs? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, and how are you feeling about that? I'm a little anxious. Okay. Fifteen months after her first visit, Josie was back with Dr. Olson. After examining Josie in private, Dr. Olson had a decision. 
you are in the perfect place to start on blockers. And she promises to begin giving her estrogen, female hormones, in two years. Around 13. That's what I think. Yes, you're not going to develop breast buds on the blockers. But um, you're not going to wait until 16 to start. You know that, okay? Josie received the blockers as an implant in her arm. It's okay if you cry. So with all the bravery she could muster, you're going to feel a little bit of a... Josie held on tight as another chapter opened in this young girl's life. Closing up the skin. A lot of times it strikes me that had this happened just 20 years ago, thank you. I wouldn't have been able to give her blockers and she would have had to go through male puberty. That terrifies me. It's all done. Do you want a hug? I don't know that she would have survived male puberty. You know, how is she going to prove to somebody that she is a girl? At best, you know, she would have been shaving every day and been the man in the dress. And, and that might be great for some people, but it certainly wasn't who she is. So much about this child's life is yet unwritten, but Josie has predictions of her own. When I grow up, I'm going to help save animals, habitats, like the ice for the polar bears. As an adult, my hair will be very long, blonde, wavy, and super pretty. I'm going to marry a boy. I'll be a tiny bit taller than my mom. I want to be a mommy. I'm going to be very beautiful.